So guys, I like to tell a lot of stories. We're not going to start yet, but I'm just getting to know you. And I want to thank you for being here. And so, um, Richard, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So we're going to have some interaction today to keep the flow going and to bring in more energy so that on some level you absolutely download what is important for you, okay? Uh, we were talking about having so much information come to us during these workshops. We're in overwhelm into some point. So that is just a by part of being at one of these conferences with so much good information. So we're lucky to be here. We're lucky for the pre presentations. We're lucky for the people that are eager to learn. So we like to have fun. So while we're getting ready to start, I want to tell you all a little story. Um, I used to substi substitute teach. And I love early school children, like first, second grade. And I would teach at this low economic uh, neighborhood school. And a lot of the kids were on food stamps. And I had first graders. And so they came in one day and I read them a story called Miss Sparkle. And there was a little girl there and she came up, Miss Warren, Miss Warren, Miss Warren. She said, I have to go to the restroom. And I said, well, what's wrong? She said, my pantyhose have to come off. They're burning me up. <laughs> and I looked down and at six years old, she had on high heel shoes and pantyhose and a little dress. And so that afternoon, I read them a story about Miss Sparkle. And so the next year, I was called back in. Come on in, have a seat. We're just uh, telling a story before we get started. And I walked in, and it was the same children. And they were so wound up. And the neighborhood teachers told me, she said, now, they are really wild and hard to keep down. She said, if you have any problems, she said, you call me. And so... I said, okay, and I walked in the room, and that little girl from the year before, oh, Miss Sparkle, you're back. <laughs> so sure enough, they went to recess, and they came back in, and they were all screaming. It was like they are on a sugar high. And so they wouldn't be quiet, even though I summons them, quiet, 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 and they just kept screaming. So I started screaming with them. And I started twirling around in a circle. And I said, I'm melting, I'm melting, I'm melting. <laughs> and I plopped down on the ground like I was dead. And I just got silent. And they all got around in a circle and they said, Miss Warren, Miss Warren, are you alive? Are you alive? And I popped up and I said, you almost made me die with your screaming. I said, please don't do that again. It hurts my ears. And so I got the nickname Miss Sparkle. And I always wear something sparkly because you got to remember to never lose your light. Okay? So I tell that story so you remember to keep your light. If you feel heavy, if you feel depressed, if you feel anything less than happy and light, then you've got energy that's convoluting your aura. You have been hooked by somebody else's thought form, emotion, and you're being controlled by that and you don't even know it. And we are all empaths. We all feel things because we're human beings. We have kind hearts. So I want to bring that to the table. Come in, have a seat. And let you know that our dowsing is a tool of many, many gifts. And you know that. So today we're going to talk about dimensional gravity, something that is a key to my heart. About um, 25 years ago, I'm an intuitive, I'm a shaman, I'm a healer, I was born with the gift. And one day, this voice comes in, you have to sit and write. And so I sat every morning at 9 o'clock, I would meditate, and I would sit and I would type on the computer what I would hear. So my mother at the time was uh, retired 
from Delta Airlines as a secretary, and after I would write for an hour, she would take it and edit it. And what came through was a whole new science, and it's volumes. And I've written papers called the Orthean Papers, and it's science formula in math to describe the frequencies they can't measure yet because they're limited with the speed of light. When we are shamans, we can go beyond the speed of light. And I always say, if I can do it, so can you. Because we are all spiritual beings having a human experience. So in my years, I'm 60 years old. In my years of study, I went to hypnotherapy school. And when I was in hypnotherapy school, we'd partner off and we would go into a deep trance and they'd say, oh, go to your happiest time. And I was five years old playing at the spring with the fairies. And I was elated as a five-year-old doing that. And we had stories in our family where my aunts would take and use a string and remove warts. And you look that up, it's called Scottish Folklore Medicine. And I always ask my aunts, you know, will you tell me how to do it? Well, we can't tell you or we'll lose the, the power. And so finally, I figured it out. And my aunt said, I just did a prayer. And for some of you that were in my class the other day, this is a repeat story, but for these new ones, I want them to hear this. So I took a cotton string and put it on a place that looked like a skin cancer on my girlfriend's leg. And I said, let me try what my aunts used to do. And I rubbed it and I asked intuitively for the consciousness of that growth to go into the string. And I could see light on the back side of the growth, like the roots coming into the string. And I wouldn't touch the string where I had rubbed it on the growth. And I tied it like my aunts used to do. And then I did it again and I tied it. And each time I would pull it tight like a knot, like a Girl Scout or Boy Scout. And then the third time I would ask the residual, all of the residual to go into the string. And when it did, I would see it leave the human body. And it would all be in the consciousness of the string. Everything has a consciousness. And then, back in the old day, they would take and bury the string. And when it rotted, the growth was supposed to go away. Well, I sped it up. I said, we're going to burn it with fire. We're going to take it and burn it with fire. So, mindset. Intention with the string, moving consciousness, a dimensional exchange. From my mind to the string, it's dimensional exchange. Easy, but you got to be free and pure intent with your heart that that's what you're doing for it to transfer. It's malleable if you have appreciation for what you're doing and you're kind and you're wanting to be of service. Yes. Okay, on, on that, it's a little bit more involved, okay? Uh, the string would be a surface on the skin for what this example is. If you can include in your intent whatever the core root causes of their mental illness is or their dis-ease, then you can bring it in, but you've got to be specific that you're going to put it into that area of the string. So that, to me, is some advanced work because if you're trying to clear somebody's chaos in their head, it may be more volume there and more trauma that caused that. And you're, unless you're very intuitive and you know how to go straight to the core causes, you may not know. You might need a rope instead. That's right. True. And I don't want, and we get into shamanic things of entities, and I don't want those coming onto you. Okay?
But that's an excellent question. How, if you could do it with the string with somebody's mental disease, okay? Okay, so let's keep this example for clearing the, the surface, and I'm going to get to that. I'm going to get to clearing mental illness and disruption in the mind due to separation of the soul. All right? Okay, good, good. So, so I put fire, and the next day, the growth started going away from my friend's leg. So I call everybody in the family. I've got the gift. I've got the gift. I've got the gift. <laughs> I got it. Sure enough, my sister, who is a non-believer, said, meet me at mom's with my husband. We've got some places. So she never told me they cleared, and later on, they cleared. And my father had a place of 40 years here, and it cleared. So another thing, if you have growth, growths like that, castor oil is an excellent tool to put on those places. That is an old Edgar Casey remedy. And again, the frequency in castor oil is so pure when it comes from the organic source that the vibration brings harmony to the skin. We're talking about divine harmony. That's where we're off. Okay? So, when we are moving light source, that's what we're doing vibrationally when we're using our pendulums. We can't see it because it's beyond the speed of light. But your heart frequency is that light source, or you wouldn't be alive. So how do we calibrate that? How do we use that as a control in a bigger way? First of all, you got to understand it, and you got to have pure heart to use it. When we are dousing, we are getting neutral. There's something about the pendulum. There's something about the L rods. There's something about the connection of our intention. When we say, okay, is the water point to the direction of the ma mainstream if we're doing water, okay? Or if we're saying, oh, I've lost my keys. What part of the room are they in? And that little, you know, I used to... <laughs> I had a friend who had a GPS, and he said, oh, Linda, Linda, Linda. He said, I've got this wonderful Maggie. It was when the GPS first came out in the car. And he said, she's going to take us wherever we want to go in Asheville, North Carolina. Those mountains will not pick up anything. <laughs> we went to five dead ends, and I said, watch this. And I said, okay, Maggie. <laughs> Where do we need to go to get to the restaurant? And I said, take that exit right there. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? And I could feel the heat from my hand because my third eye went to the restaurant just like that. So what do we do? I told him three turns and we drive into the restaurant. <laughs> he was cussing. <laughs> so, I pay $360 for Maggie and you do it like that with your hand? <laughs> we did the same thing in Miami. He said, you're going to get us killed. <laughs> same thing. So what is it? Dimensional transference. We go straight from our mind and our heart with intent to our target. We transcend time. Guys, that's the, that's the quantum key here we transcend time because we are beyond cosmic time space control our consciousness goes up to infinity and when we're tuning in with our heart and our mind it's like we link to a quantum field and that's how we can do long distance clearings long distance healings I had a client that was referred to me in Africa. He was digging for diamonds. And so I was sent the property plat to show him where to dig. 
and how far down and where would be the first dig. So when I do a property like that, what I do is I take a ruler and my pendulum and I go across and I tune into the land and I ask what minerals are here, what ore is here. And the property was loaded with diamonds, emeralds, sapphires, he even had gold. And so I was able to tell him where, and I asked specific questions. And because I was tuned in, I could get the answer from Mother Nature because I asked permission. And I told Mother Nature that I was appreciative for her allowing me to take in what her value was. Now, when you're tuning in with your heart, your mind, and your soul, and you're in that inquiry of dousing and intuiting, what you are doing is you are using intelligence of the highest order. And you don't even know that you are that. I mean, you just kind of, sometimes you come in to these seminars and you think, oh, you know, this is fun. It's amazing. But how do we really get there? Because we're cosmic human beings. We're all connected. It's collective. So our ESP gives us our inner antenna that supplies us with perception. All right, we feel, we hear, we see, and we energetically vibrate. The wave of life, the music of the spheres, that's the harmony in everything that exists the music of the spheres. So I used to lay down at night and I would hear this fine hum and I realized it was the earth. So how can all of you do that? You ask to remember your divine hearing. Please write that down, divine hearing. When you start giving yourself permission that you can do this, then it will start coming in. You are your greatest creator to summons your divine grace, your divine ESP. So I live in a little house in Atlanta and I often have ghosts. <laughs> And they'll come through and uh, they like to play and I keep protecting the house but there's some underground water nearby and I have five pets so sometimes they're little conduits and so what happens is is I have to clear the energy and just send them to the light when you meditate a lot at home or do prayers what happens is it's an energy volumizer. So in my room, the animals go crazy and want my chair because <laughs> there's so much light in that vortex because I bring it in every day. So what happens is, is when you're out and you're a, a big meditator and you're doing this work all the time, when you swoosh by somebody, your energy field will automatically wake them up. True story, I went to see a Hindi uh, guru, Amaji, and Karunamai, I've seen both of them, but this was Karunamai, and it was at a Hindu temple in Riverdale, Georgia, which is this ornate, beautiful structure. And we were in the big room, there were over 300 people, and when she came in to do her talk, the whole room was like a rainbow, swirling, and I could see it in my third eye. And I said, oh my gosh, she's cleansing us and blessing us at the same time. I said, how incredible. And so she did her talk about all the, you know, charity things they're doing around the world to clean the water up. And then she went to lunch. And when she came back from lunch, it was like the movie Avatar and there was white rain coming in the whole room. She was giving us what they call darshan. 
the blessing of oneness. And it was a blessing event that day. So she had us write down on four by six cards three things that we wanted blessed. And my girlfriend was Indian, and she said, now, Linda, if she puts her feet down when you go up to give her the card, she said, you have to put your hands on her feet. And she said, she'll clear all your karma. And I thought, put my hands on her feet. I didn't know that practice. I was told not to touch strangers. <laughs> so anyway, I write, you know, the things, success with work, blessing of the children, financial, you know, success. Those were my three golden, you know. And so we get in line and we go up and it takes forever. And so sure enough, right before I got to her, she's sitting in a lotus position and she undoes her feet and puts them on the ground. I said, oh my God. <laughs> so needless to say, I was a little ignorant. I didn't touch her feet and she kind of got aggravated. But she took my card, and this was the golden ticket. I could telepathically hear what she did to bless me. And what happened was, as she read each one, and as she read it, she aligned it to the cosmos, to my higher self, and to the earth, and Mother Earth. Okay? She aligned it to all that exist with me. Wow. So later on, I'm reading one of Godfrey Ray King's books, and it's volume 19 on the I Am Presence, and he says it in a different way, but he basically taught the same principle. But this is going in to the hologram of oneness, that infinite power in the universe and meditating and sitting there and downloading what you want to manifest. And what you do is you allow the intention to vibrate with you, your higher self. And once you vibrate in that same vibration, you've magnetized it into your field. That's dimensional co-creating and then you bring it down and you ask for it to be one with all of consciousness one with all the collective one with mother nature and the earth and you ask and thank it for its blessing okay now, one last piece on that is I like to do a prayer that if I want to intend something, that I transmute, clear, and cleanse my ego. The little I is what I call it, the little I, my ego, and my consciousness of anything that would block what I'm going to in intend and download. It is your big eye, your I am presence, that is your super intelligence. And you just weren't taught in school to use that. You were taught to be inside the box. Okay? So when you're doing long distance healing or long distance intention, what I want you to do is I want you to learn about going to the higher heart of the person you're going to work on, that you're doing the prayers for. You do not have to know every act of what and how they need to be healed, your person, okay? What you can do is ask their higher heart to collaborate with you. And you ask to go to the hologram of one of their soul because you're in the hologram of one also. And you call forth the divine healing that best serves their destiny.
and you ask for any collective sources that the hologram of oneness can assist will come forth with that. Whether it's a mentor, whether it's angels, whether it's a cure, whether it is a clearing of their divine field where they've been impaired in some way, you ask for that to come through. And if there's anything else that they need that their higher heart wants you to know, ask the divine hologram to bring it in. You can call the divine hologram the law of one. You can call it God. You can call it source. And you can call it infinity. There are many, many names. And it's very interesting. When I just did that, there's a, there's a guide that just came in because my hearing just went like humming. Okay? So that brings me to another teaching that I want to give you. Is that we can call on angels, whether you believe on them or not, are divine beings of the oneness, pure beings, to support you. You can call on a hundred, you can call on two. And I've found with meditations and healing sessions and teaching that when we call on those angels to support us, it turns up your volume, it allows for you to work without interruption, it allows for you to work protected, and it brings in faster solutions with what you're doing. So in our dousing or our divining, what happens is we are divine mind, working with divine communication, divine expression, divine heart, divine feeling. Remember the ESP role here, okay? So our heart, which is our soul source, aligns to our minds, our consciousness, and there are many levels of consciousness. Combined tunes us into the element of cause and effect. We intend, we receive the effect. Here we become a liaison, the direct line channel of transference with our dousing. Love is a key. And we're going to talk about now twin hearts. We have this heart muscle. We also have, in chakra terms, we have a heart center. In my world of shamanic training and understanding and healing, we have a heart matrix. Your heart matrix is a thin energy field around your body, a dimension that's your Akashic records, your past, present, and future. It's right there with you like a blueprint that's invisible. And I can read it like an x-ray machine, and so can you. It's just flipping the switch up into the higher dimensions with intention and knowing how to clear yourself to go in to your own Akashic records to read your soul. And when you do that, you can tap past, present, and future. You can tap any history element. You can tap any time frame with any soul. The big kahuna. Okay? And it's a wave. It's a vibration and it's a dimension. So high priestess, priest in ancient worlds would go into these transis, transcendent worlds and they would do magic. Okay? What is magic? Magic is an intention, right? I once had a really good professor tell me, he said, you know, I've studied those, uh, those uh, black magic people down in Haiti. <laughs> he said... He said, if they tell one of their tribe people they're going to die, he said, they will get sick and die. He said, because they're so entrained in beliefs. 
So if somebody says something to you that is vicious, you say, not in my world. I cancel that from the law. Cancel it from the law. And when you say cancel it from the law, what have you just done? You took it out of the dimensions. You took it out of the ethers. You took it out of your consciousness when you did not claim it. So when you watch the news, when you read the paper, and somebody is so emotional, and it's something that you feel their emotional pain, what have you just done? Sponge. Sponge. You know what happens when you wash a lot of dishes with a sponge? It gets really dirty, right? So I want to keep your sponges clear. I want you to keep your minds clear. So every day is the best day of my life. Expected and unexpected miracles come all day long. I've got this. Never, 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 never say, I can't do this. Because as soon as you say it, it goes straight in to that reticular activator, which is your guiding steering wheel. You'll do whatever you tell that reticular activator. Okay? So do I have any questions so far over what we've gone over? Is everybody following me? Give me some heads nods. Okay, good, 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 good. So next, I want to take you into a little experiential and give you some connecting, all right? So I want everybody to take a deep breath and put both feet on the floor, please. And what we're going to do is we're going to connect our, our hearts to our higher hearts. And our higher hearts are going to be up here in another dimension. And then we're going to connect to the sun, and we're going to bring that column of light down into Mother Earth. So we're going to send love up, get it back through cause and effect, fill up our body, go down in the earth, and then I'm going to do some shamanic alignment with you to activate your soul star above your head. So just close your eyes and relax. You'll stay awake and you'll wake up fresh. <laughs> I promise. So imagine feeling love, something that you have felt either with someone you love, something that you feel that you've had an experience of love in your lifetime where it was just beautiful. And as you feel that, I want you to feel that feeling and see that expressed in your body and let it extend five feet around your body. And once you do that, I want you to imagine that feeling coming out the palms of your hands and you send it up to the sun. And as you send it up to the sun, it showers back to you. It's a frequency. It's a vibration. It's that rain shower of white light I told you about earlier. And it comes down and it fills your body with beautiful, loving energy. It's rainbow colors. And your aura gets even bigger. It goes 12 feet out. And as you do this, Send it down into the ground and feel that love volume turned up. And you consciously thank the sun and for all its love. And you send that love into Mother Earth and say, I appreciate all the life force that you give me. I appreciate the ground I walk on. I appreciate all the healing energy that you reinforce me with every day and all the elements that feed me and nurture my food and purify my water. I appreciate the oxygen 
I appreciate you keeping all my soul safe. And as you do this, I want you to feel the love come back up from Mother Earth. And as you do, I want you to feel and imagine a ball of cosmic fire in front of your tummy. And as you see that cosmic fire, it also is love. But the reason I'm calling it cosmic fire is because it's volumized. It has really, really strong light. It's iridescent gold and white. And with the love that you've connected with above, in between and below, with love, I want you to send that energy field in front of you out to every sentient being, every person on the planet, and just thank them for being here. Thank them for all that they're doing. And you send intention for their highest and best good to be awakened at this time. That their highest truth and heart be blessed in all their consciousness minds. In every dimension. For every lifetime. And I want you to feel yourself burst into white light with the planet. And as you do this, I want you to ask for any knowledge that you need to come to you in your dream time tonight. in this same wave of vibration, in this same hologram of pure divine dimension. Now, as you do that, and that settles in and harmonizes to your heart, your mind, your soul, I want you to say thank you to all there is. And I want you to feel white and blue light coming up from Mother Earth, feeling your body and your aura going up to the sun and coming back down with purple and gold energy down into Mother Earth. Blue and white energy coming up from Mother Earth purple and gold energy down from the sun and come back into the room and wiggle your fingers, your toes and move your head left to right and open your eyes. That is such a sweet, sweet intent. And what you do when you do that is you set yourself aside. That little I, that little ego went south. <laughs> okay? And that's a really beautiful feeling. So everybody give yourself a round of applause. You know why I do that? It wakes you up and it brings you back into center. It makes you focused. Okay? And it also makes you appreciate yourself. Because how many times as givers are we always giving and we don't say you're doing a good job? Okay? So if you don't say you're doing a good job, then what happens is, is you burn out. You give too much and you don't replenish yourself. So that's some of the dimensional work that I do. 
is for you to recharge yourself. So with that, guys, we're going to take a 10-minute break, all right? Please drink plenty of water because we're moving a lot of energy, all right? I hope you're having fun. Sure. There's been like so many teachers talking about it, you know, how they call it and how to speak to the guides and what's in that. And so I just wanted to see if you had anything to say about how you call in the angels. Well, do you want do you want to call in the angels or you want to call in your specific guides? Or both? Both sounds good, but I was <laughs> prompted to ask you about angels because there's a particular angel that I'm working with. But I meditate and chant to this angel. And when I used to do my Reiki, sometimes I would see angels when I would work with clients. But I think it's something else more I need to know. Okay. So do the sun and ground, okay? And then go above your head, mm -hmm. connect to the sun, and call in that angel. So you're saying just visualize. Visualize. When you call in the angel, you're up here, your higher self. Mm -hmm. Call in the angel, and I want you to look into her or his eyes. Mm -hmm. And I want you to feel their frequency. Mm -hmm. And then what happens is that's your radio station. That's your frequency. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Nope. Okay. The only reason why is because there's so many angels, and we don't really know what they look like. So just come up with what image comes into your mind. Don't make it too left-brained, I guess. You have six guides right now. Two are angels, mm -hmm. okay? So for whatever you feel that angel is helping you with, where it's teaching you healing and to excel your Reiki, then you call that in. Mm -hmm. Call that one in. Okay. And you don't have to know their name. Okay. Sometimes their eyes will be green, sometimes brown like human beings, and sometimes they'll be pure gold. Mm -hmm. Okay? Okay, so I don't even need to know. No. Unless they want me to know. Okay. Right. And you know when you do... The Yusui, I'm a Reiki master, mm -hmm. two legs. Mm -hmm. You know that you can call in the Yusui masters. Mm -hmm. If you're doing Karuna uh, Reiki, you can call on them. Well, I'm also a homeopath. I'm a certified homeopath. And I really am into practicing my homeopathy and building my practice. Okay. So, and um, I was guided to know that they're helping me with that, mm -hmm. the angels. You know, I want to deepen that, you know. So you've also done this before mm -hmm. in other lifetimes. So you already have the knowledge. Mm -hmm. One life, you are a master. Mm -hmm. So call on your higher self that already has that knowledge. Okay. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> what time do we go to? It's 430. Okay, great. So you're a Georgia girl. I am. Can you tell? <laughs> Paula Dean was in Kroger one day when I went in there. She was signing autograph books. And she stood, you know, they wouldn't let me go in the bathroom. I had my daughter with me. And I said, you can't go in the bathroom until Paula Dean comes out. And so they were finishing up, and they had two limousines outside. And so she starts to go out, bye, y'all. <laughs> So what do you girls do? All kinds of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> boring, that's for sure. Crystal balls. Yum. Crystal ball meditation. Lots of things. One of many. Do you have the ones from North Carolina? Some visits and friends from base to base. Crystal balls from there. From there specifically. Crystal. So that there, there's a big crystal shop in Asheville, North Carolina, and that's where I heard them. And when he played, when he did the G sharp, that was to me the music of the spheres, which is the heart. And the 
the mountains in North Carolina are the second oldest mountain ranges in the world. And I went into a gym shop in Franklin, North Carolina, and this guy was behind the counter, and I'd been told about the largest uh, ruby and garnet mine was there, and Tiffany's in New York used to own it, and then somebody bought it. And so I was asking this guy behind the counter, you know, what did he know about the garnet mines? Come to find out, he was the one that bought it, and he was a healer. I mean, it was like, you know, synchronicity all over the place. And so, you know, I was telling him I'd do healing, and I did some healing for his son. And so he takes me over to the corner, and there's this glass-like shadow box with all these special crystals. And he said, here, hold this. And he pulls out this sacred geometry garnet that's like a golf ball. And it's a perfect, perfect sacred geometry. And it came out of the ground like that, and it was humming. And I said, oh my gosh, so what I do when I hold something like that is I tune into it and I download it. It's like I take it in and I thank it, and I've got what I need. Yeah. I said, that's fabulous. He said, it's yours. I said, oh. He said, wait just a minute. And he went to the back, and he brings another, and it's like a double terminated little bitty opal and a garnet, and it was a gold garnet. Oh my and... Uh, he had me do the same thing. He gave me that one too. Oh, Can I help you? So I no, come on. No, I was just, I missed the first like few minutes because I had lost my sweater. <laughs> but I was wondering um, if you have a book or what was your background? I think I missed the first like. Speech. Okay, so my background, yeah. all right, is um, you can go to my website and I can give you a card, but I am a natural born shaman, came from healers on both sides of the family. My grandmothers on my father's side were Eastern Cherokee, and I spontaneously was healing without training. So I'm a savant. I would go to training classes, and I'd already know the material. Oh, okay. Wow. That's yeah. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. generational. I think you had with you. Mm, it was. It really was. So, but I've studied. I never. I think we never stop learning, ever, 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 and that's really important. And work on ourselves, because every part that we work on, it affects the whole planet. If we move one thing, we've moved it for a collective. And boy, we can't move enough right now. We haven't been to that area in a long time. We used to go to that area a lot. I got a great story to tell you about the beloved of the Cherokee. His name was Jerry Wolf. And this lady told me, she said, he's the purest energy I've ever been around. And I said, I got to see if he's still alive. She said, he's in his 90s. So I went up to Cherokee and I asked, he was at the museum. I found out Tuesday he does lectures and stories. You'll enjoy this. This is Jerry Wolf, the beloved of the Cherokee. Before he died, I went up to see him. And so I took him a little package. My daddy used to make moonshine. And I was got to take him homemade pickles, moonshine, and something else. So he's like at the reception desk when I walk in the museum. And I said, Jerry, I was sent by spirit to come and see you. I said, here's your little care package. Boy, he knew what that moonshine was. He opened it up. He said, that's what? What? <laughs> he stuck his finger in there. He lit up like a light bulb that I'd brought him. I said, my daddy made that. And so he got so excited. I said, can I get my picture with you? Because there hadn't been a beloved chosen by the Cherokee for 200 years. So he was like the, the, the saint. And so he takes me outside and we get our picture made in front of the mandala that's the Cherokee. And he said, you see that mountain up there? He said, that's Snake, Snake Mountain. He said, I have a story I'm going to tell you during story time just for you. And it was so ironic because that morning I put on snakeskin shoes I was guided to wear. So he goes to story time and we go in there and he starts telling all these little kid stories. And then he looks right straight at me and he said, I'm going to tell y'all a, a story about Snake Mountain. He said there was an old healer. He said that had all the medicine and he was going to die. And when the healer was going to die, 
nobody was ready to take the medicine. So he put it in a crystal and left it with a snake protecting the crystal. And he said, mm -hmm, with all the healing knowledge. So it would be a library crystal. That's okay. Okay, so we'll. So can we get to that? Let me finish this for them, cause not not today, but I'll talk to you individually about it. Okay, so we're getting ready to start back. I might as well tell the story for the whole class, okay? Cause this is about transference. Okay, guys, let's take a seat. Let's get started back. <clears throat> I'll tell you a bunch of times I love to tell stories. And so this is one of those amazing, amazing things that happens miraculously when you least expect it. Okay? So about six years ago, there was a friend of mine that told me about this Cherokee Indian who was the beloved. She said he's the best vibration of anybody I've ever met. And so I said, well, I need to meet Jerry Wolf. And so I called the museum, and they said, oh, he tells stories on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I said, okay. So Thursday I go up, and I'm going to fast forward. First thing I learned was when I got there, he had gone to lunch. <laughs> so I go to the local Cherokee restaurant. Nothing happens by chance. I meet these two gals that are doing their ancestry, and we become quick friends and share information. And the second thing was, is there were two guys outside the museum dressed in Native American folklore dress, and I started to chat with them, and I asked if I could meet the medicine man. That is a no-no. You do not get to meet and know who the medicine man is. And so they proceed to tell me the story about his mother what had diabetes and she was going to lose her foot and the doctors couldn't heal her so they they put a message out to the medicine man and he made her a medicine bag and he said wear this for 10 days and he said and your foot will heal so he said you you can't understand I said well can you tell me how to make a medicine bag he said well he said it's individual he said it's individual for each person he said for what she had, he picked the herbs for her. And then he put them in with the intent for it to heal her maladies. I immediately knew how to make a medicine bag. I had a coworker that had cancer. And I went home and I got in touch with her higher heart, my higher self, God energy, her higher heart, and I asked what herbs she needed to take the cancer out of her body. I was guided to use sacred tobacco, oregano, salt, and sage. And I put it in a medicine bag, and honest to goodness, I put my hands on it and I asked the healers in the Native American tribe to bless it to take the disease off of her. And I heard in my head an ancient language. And it transferred into the medicine bag. I took it to work, gave it to her. She wore it for 10 days, and I told her, just like the string, burn it when it's over so that the disease goes back to Mother Nature. She got a free bill of health. So it could be prayer. It could be a combination of the herbs acting consciously to pull the frequencies of the discord in the body. Mother Nature knows harmony. The body gets out of harmony because of the mind, the emotions, and the mental dis-ease of disconnection. Okay? Now, I'm not making any instant healer claims here. We are still humans having a human experience, 
and it depends on an individual specific case. Do you understand? All right. So, you know, a medicine man or a voodoo doctor can travel those higher dimensions and set themselves aside and transcend time and space. Why? Because it's a consciousness up there. They can fly through the sky. We all can astral travel. I watched recently the movie about the magnificent, is it the magnificent fungi? It's about the mushrooms in the earth and how they're such energy that, that feed the life organism and the ecosystem all in our mother earth. So when I watched that, I was instantly guided to meditate and shape shift and go sit with the mushrooms energetically in the earth. And I said to the mushrooms, thank you for being here. What is it I need to know? Can I send you healing? Can I do anything to help you? Appreciation. Make note of appreciation for what feeds you. And then, if they have a gift for me, thank you. You know, it's like, I'm not, I don't come here to be greedy. I come here to serve. If I get a gift, I am so grateful. And I feel like every one of you are a gift to me today. Every one of you. And everything you do is a gift for all of us. So please keep up the good work. Please. So, the medicine bag intention. Prayers and reunion in a dimension that is not in this physical form. You're working with higher mind. Okay? Now, we may not have the science tools yet to measure that dimensional gravity, I call it, but we sure do travel it every day. What do you think you do when you go to sleep at night and you feel like you're flying in the sky and all of a sudden you're boom, back in your body and you really probably did it a lot when you were kids? <laughs> I had a cousin one time and we were like three years apart. She used to, we'd lay out on the grass and she'd say, look at all those stars. She said, don't you think we're from somewhere else? <laughs> And I said, I don't know if I understand that yet. She said, well, you're nine years old. <laughs> so she told me later, you know, we, we got in lost touch because she lived in Florida. And we got together and we were talking and we were both into metaphysics. And she said, you know, she said, when I was about 13, she said, they would come and see me. And she said, I'd wake up and she said, my body would be levitated four inches from the roof, like the, the ceiling. And she said, I just tell them, put me down. <laughs> so you never know when you're going to have other dimensions come to see you. Okay? And there is that factor. So how do they come in? And how does dimensional gravity come into that? It's a frequency, guys. It's sound and light measured by octaves. So remember I told you back in 2000, I was told sit and write. Well, what came in in all those uh, ethereal science papers, the Orthean papers I'm telling you about, are the formulas to measure the dimensions. And they are by octaves. So... One of the things is we do go up in my world of experience all the way to infinity. I've been up to the 81st dimension and then beyond. And I've been in meditations and gone through wormholes into another galaxy with other people with me in the meditation group. And they all come back and saw the same thing. So I feel like we're talking about a sci-fi movie. All right? I wouldn't be able to tell you about it if it hasn't happened. So for people that can twist time and space, okay, like Yuri Geller, he can twist a spoon with intent. Well, what he's doing is he's calling on the elementals. He's calling, causing on cosmic fire. And what he does is he concentrates on the weak part of the spoon 
until it gets so hot that it bends. Okay? And I had a friend meet him at a restaurant, and he did it for fun for his little girl. And, and I had friends out at the shaman's conference, and they would get together and have spoon-bending parties. And they'd stand in a circle and concentrate, okay? And they'd all get the fork or the spoon all warped. What are we talking about? Concentrated energy, intent, but extended. On that one, extended with cosmic fire, the elements, okay? I was telling um, <clears throat> a story earlier about fool's crow. In the wisdom of Fool's Crow, in his book, he would do sweat lodges, and this kid had a brand new saddle, and somebody in the reservation stole his saddle. So they went to do a sweat lodge, the kid and Fool's Crow, and they covered up, and they did sweat all night, and in the morning, the stolen saddle was on the table, and nobody had left the sweat lodge. So... What happened was, is Fool's Crow had the elementals, the little people, go out and get the saddle. <laughs> that is shape-shifting. How do you shape-shift? Change the volume on the dimension. Collaborate with a unified field, unity consciousness. The elements... You love them, they will love you. And they already love you, just like our animals love us unconditionally. Oh my goodness. They know what we feel, they know what we're thinking because they are not separated from it. My father used to tell me as a child, growing up on a farm in Georgia, if you let an animal know you're afraid of it, it will bite you. Because they feel that fe fear. So if you are in a room and you walk in and you're ex it just showering and you're in that whirling rainbow like I was telling you about with Karuna Mai, you feel that vibration of love. I don't care if you're 100 feet away. You feel it. So what I want you to do it's just realize what you're energizing and what your thoughts are creating goes out in a ripple of wave in the dimensions. Above, 360 degrees, and to Mother Earth. We have enough toxicity in the world right now. We need to be icons of love, expression, and thought every day. And I have a best friend that we call each other two or three times a week. Happy birthday! <laughs> Happy birthday! And we go back and forth and we just laugh. And we're mastermind buddies. We talk about each other's business. Even though I'm in healing arts, she's in public relations. But she's a shaman also. And it's just good to lift somebody and hear that. And she's the best listener. When you listen to people all day long, I'm a healer, spiritual consultant, and teacher. So all I do is work with people, and I'm tuned in. And when I call her, she asks me how are things going, woo. She calls me woo-woo. And she listens. It's the only person I call that listens first. And you know what she says, even if she doesn't understand it all? I understand. Oh. You're talking about golden, you know? It's like, I get it. I get it. I appreciate it. How to win friends and influence people. Dale Carnegie. The first thing people want to, do, to be is appreciated, to be recognized. And when you were a little kid, Miss Warren, Miss Warren. <laughs> they want to be recognized. I used to have one of the little kids, same classroom. I had him first in kindergarten. And he came in all dirty, hadn't had a bath, and he was angry. 
And I said, Jacob, what's wrong? Come over here. I said, what's wrong with you? He said, I was up all night. My mom and brother were fighting. And he said, and I'm hungry. I haven't had anything to eat. Now, I always kept a stash of food because these kids did not have names. And they have free lunch tickets. They have food at the school. But, you know, sometimes the kids get tired of that. So I made him special and I made him sit up there. And I always took the opportunity to do healing on those kids silently because I felt like sometimes that was my calling. Sometimes you do healing and prayers and it doesn't make a difference like your person with the mind games. Why? Maybe they're a teacher to us. We don't know that, but all we can do is do our best, hold the love space, and trust. Trust, trust, trust. If you ever get into the fear and the worry that it can't be corrected, you just put out the wave, it can't be corrected. You trust the best comes out of this. It's the best day of my life, okay? So when we were doing the meditation earlier, what we did was twin hearts. We sent love to our higher heart and the divine energy. We let that come back to us. We sent it down into Mother Earth. We let that power build from the love and appreciation of Mother Earth. We brought it back up and we sent it out into the Earth. Okay? Grounding. Going up to the sun bringing in the gold energy and going out like roots of a tree down into the earth. What happens is, is it gives us sustenance. It keeps us from flying all over the place. When you start handling higher energies and being intuitive, you're all out of your body and flying and doing all kinds of things that you never thought you could do. You think Peter Pan can fly, honey? You have never seen me fly. <laughs> so grounding is important. The second part of that you'll learn in a lot of energy schools. If you don't ground, you can't hold the space for the person you're working on. And that's also very beneficial. So oftentimes, well, I'll do it at the beginning of the week. For the whole week, I have scheduled appointments. And so what I do is I just put out a prayer for everybody to be transmuted, cleared, and cleansed of all dis-ease so that when they come in, we're in harmony. And what that does is it allows me that when they talk, I can hear past their words. I can hear what their ego and their soul need together to heal. So I have this uh, particular client that used to be a professional athlete. And he'll be talking one thing, but I see the core of his little boy. Okay? And what I do with that is I take that training he's had in that sport he plays and I use that analogy of a game that he can relate to because that's his training. And he will get the directive and message every time. How did I do that? Because I got into the dimension of his heart. I got into the truth of what was going on and I was given the guidance of the words divine communication, divine heart connection, divine soul guiding, divine grounding so that whatever is communicated holds. When I used to do, and I don't do it much anymore on a physical level, but I would work on somebody energetically. And I would just move things like, you know, like, like, you know, like somebody, like a ninja turtle. <laughs> and then when the healing would be finished, what I would do is I would 
feel it. I'd feel the energy settle and I'd feel the calmness in the body and I'd see the body all energized and back in its rainbow colors. No gray, no anger, just peaceful. The harmony that you want to reestablish as a, as a healer, whether you're working with them as a physical energy work or psychological from a healer standpoint. And what I would do is I would bring in that white and light blue energy. The white is the divine energy. The blue is a Christ consciousness like 700 plus megahertz. And what it does is it sinks the heart and mind of the person being healed and they snap into alignment with it and they can hold the healing. Okay? And, and once you do that blue and white light, what happens is you'll feel it anchor, and when you feel it anchor, I close it up. Like, just, just close it up and I give it thanks, and then I know that we're finished. So, again, going back, what are we working with, guys? Every time you do your dousing, you're tapping into your heart, your mind, your soul. You're tapping and dancing dimensions. Every time you work as a healer on somebody and you're connecting into their maladies and your intent to help them with that, you're on the highway of dimensional gravity. With source, pretty big stuff, right? So how do you do this with land? How do you do this with Mother Nature? Same way. It's no different. Mother Nature is alive. She has feelings, she has a soul, and it's collective. What does that mean? It's connected with energy fields. I call them stargates. There are vortexes, there are portals, and depending on where you are and how you work and you were destined to work with those, you will be guided to go to certain places without you even knowing to be awakened when you are on the path to become a healer, self-realized as a conscious human being again and not living in a box of an ego or a child that was told, no, that's wrong, you can't do that. So I want you guys to explore and when you meditate, I want you to ask your higher heart. I want to awaken more of who I am. I want to have more volume in my consciousness. I want to be clearer. I want to download some kind of new talent. Okay? So what we're going to do right now is I'm going to piggyback you to a place in the earth that has a library of crystal for you. And how do I do that? Shamanically. Okay? So I'm going to take you into a cave, into Mother Earth. On Thursday, I took the group down into the center of Mother Earth and I asked them to tune in to whatever energies and knowledge they needed. Okay? Today I'm going to take you into wherever the place is on this earth that you have been your maximum self. And we're going to realign you to that. So everybody, just put down your paper, please. So we're time traveling with no time, okay? And I want you to connect to the sun again. This is always your go-to. And I want you to bring in that gold column of light. And this time I'm going to call in 1,200 angels to hold the space for everybody in this room. And bring that gold column in over your head, out the bottom of your feet. Relaxing. And this time we're going to align with intention to the center of Mother Earth and the harmony of the music of the spheres. That's the harmony in the earth. The harmony in all your soul, in all your memories, in all your life force, and all the cosmos. 
divine frequency, the music of the spheres. And as we do this, I'm going to activate what I call your Merkaba. It's that swirling energy around you that's connected to your heart matrix, your soul, and it will allow you to transfer anywhere and everywhere at once. So just imagine and feel relaxed. And as you do that, on the count of three, I'm going to take you into your soul records. So imagine your soul records on the 18th floor above your head in an elevator. And on the count of three, we will be on that elevator and we're going to step off into your soul records. Easily and effortlessly, and you're in control the whole time and safe. One, two, three. As the elevator door opens, I want you to walk into this library of soul records. It can look like a real library. It can feel like light. Just step in and off of the elevator with love in mind. And ask your higher heart to give you access to your next talent that you can use for the highest and best good of your soul and what you came to do. Also, while you're there, ask your soul records For any knowledge to come to you in your dream time that you have to give to other people, specific, someone you love, one of your clients, one of your children. I hear sacred sound coming to many of you, and sometimes that's how the knowledge comes in a wave. Remember, we're doing dimensional work. Next, ask this knowledge to show you, or it will come to you in your dreams tonight, any specific place on the continent that you're to meditate with to go back and retrieve wisdom that will help you in your success and your joy and your journey. As we receive all of that, I activate your pineal glands to your higher self and your highest use of your intuition going forward. Hear your voice, I am divine mind. Hear your heart and feel your heart, I am divine heart. Feel I am divine love, service, and being, and I am safe, and I have permission to use this in all that I am. Yes. 
ask if there's anything else you need from this visit today and allow it to come in. Any knowledge that you receive now will continue to grow in your dream time for your highest and best good in this love and honoring. Bring your consciousness back into the present body, into the classroom, into your heart, and just feel an energy going down into Mother Earth, anchoring you back into your body, fully aware and fully contained with what vibrations, sound, light, information you gathered. And feel yourself knowing that you can review this in your meditations, in your journaling, in your dream time, and it will come out in your consciousness when you need it the most. And fill your body up with white and blue iridescent light. Harmonizing to divine heart, divine mind, your new divine sound waves that will now link you to bring in divine truth for everything that you have coming. We balance our hearts. We balance all our energetics. And we feel lighter and freer. And we give thanks. And just take a deep breath Wiggle your hands and your feet. Stomp your feet for a minute in your seat. Get back into that body. Wake up, wake up, wake up. It's fun to go down the rabbit hole, but it's even funner to go up the tunnel. <laughs> so... I have to ask you, do you have any better understanding of dimensional gravity? Do you understand its frequencies in a higher realm that's beyond light and sound from a shamanic standpoint? And that you can use it through intention and you've been using it all the time. Any questions? Okay, just ask their permission. Send them love. I appreciate you. And and uh, is it okay that I can remove you so that the forest has a balance? Because there's too many, they all can't fit. Okay, so, so this is one thing. You call on the hierarchy of that nature spirit to show you which ones come up. Because if you've ever watched the documentary on trees, there's a matriarch tree, and you never want to pull the matriarch tree because you'll kill the whole forest. They feed the forest. So get in tune with talking to Mother Nature and ask the hierarchy of the nature spirit of that tree or that, that village what comes up and set your intent you would like to clear this area and they'll tell you even down to picking tomatoes mm -hmm. they they did that to me last week it was like okay <laughs> 
Any yes. I was thinking that someone who may have experienced a, a, a sense of loneliness or something like that becoming a healer at a very young age that maybe you never had any crisis of time to help them. But it seems to me what one of the gifts of this conference is having taken the basic course um, is the encouragement that you get from people that have done this many more years than you have. But the encouragement is also trying to be transmitted to me to believe in and have confidence in myself. And that's a trust factor. And I just wondered if you had a confidence crisis ever in your journey as a shaman and if how would you talk to that okay I had many crises and oftentimes you will have healers and they've gone through tragedies and storms and I had a, a very dysfunctional childhood and I stayed out of my body most of my childhood to survive that mm -hmm. and so what happened was a car accident I had a neck injury and Western medicine couldn't heal it. And so I have worked for 30 years to clear that. And in that journey, I've done trips around the world with shamans and psychic surgeons and everything I've done has been another layer of clearing my soul. And when I've done that, then teachers from the other side would come. I would have going to see the Native American I would have all kinds of miracles come to train me so I could give it back to you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. So one of the biggest things is we have, to, we have to retrain our minds. Our mind is a key factor. And I love the book, Florence Scovel Shin, The Writings of Florence Scovel Shin, and Joseph A. Murphy, because they teach us our words are our wisdom. Can you say that slower or write them down? Florence. Scovel, S-C-O-V-E-L, Shin, S-H-I-N-N, and Joseph A. Murphy. And they both used affirmative prayer words intention. Because if you say, oh, I need money, or oh, I'm sick, then what are you? Broke and sick. <laughs> I used to have this aunt call every, every morning. And my sister and I would just argue who was not going to answer the phone. And we called her sister. And she was a hypochondriac. So what was she? She was sick all the time. And I'd answer the phone, hey, sugar. I said, how are you, sister? Well, I had a stroke yesterday and a heart attack this morning. <laughs> and I'd look at my sister up with my hand over the phone and going, She's on double today. <laughs> Bless her heart, but she was a sweet woman and make a great fresh coconut cake. So, so you see what I'm saying? So when I get up, I may have time traveled all night long and done healing around the world. Honest, I really do schmuck work like that. And I wake up and I'm like, oh, I did not sleep last night. And so what I do is, the first thing I do is I get my cup of coffee and I sit down with my journal and I get quiet and I write down, it's the best day of my life. Expected and unexpected miracles come all day long because when I start doing that, guess what? I become a magnet for it and I ground in that. And I make sure that my office is cleared between clients Somebody comes in with something really, really heavy. They always say to me, you know, I just love coming to see you. I feel so much lighter when I read. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, guys, make it fun. If you don't remember how to play like a child, my kids get angry sometimes. Because <laughs> they say, Mom, you're so positive. Well, I earned it. I had some tough times. I watched my family, heavy alcoholics, have some tough times. And they were doing the best they could with what they had. They didn't have the education. They didn't have the healing modalities. We're so lucky. You know, if you're heavy with emotions and, and, and heart, 
and sometimes you work with people and you just can't shake it yourself, you might need to get work from somebody else because we are emotional and we do take on other people's stuff. We're sponges. So if, if you, you find yourself regularly doing that, then you need to check your practice and learn how to work with the higher dimension and call in the extra support you need from your soul and those around you. Okay? And pay attention to the signs. We teach this all the time. If there is uh, things showing up, did you know that if there is a poisonous plant in your yard within a short period, I think it's five or 15 inches away, is the remedy? The remedy. Mother Nature is always in balance. And if she is thrown off balance because of our ignorance, guess what? She cleans it up. Thunderstorms, hurricanes, earthquakes. That is self-house cleaning. And she will move energy and destroy parts of herself to clear out the lower consciousness. I saw that in New Orleans when Katrina hit. It was so corrupt. Guess what happened? A lot of those people moved. And when there is a big disaster, there's a ripple around the earth. It's a blanket gang, and it cycles. Okay? So, one last thing. I want you to practice the infinity. Okay? Everybody put out your right hand, connect to the sun, and I want you to run an infinity right to left. Okay? And as you run that infinity right to left, okay, in front of you, I want you to feel and see a gold and blue light. If you can't feel and see a gold and blue light, intend a gold and blue light. Okay? Now, why do I have my left hand up? Because I'm receiving from the sun. Okay? I'm doing this for visual and for you to practice it. Now, that gold and royal blue light is magic in your hand. Okay? Now, drop this hand and put your right hand like this and your left palm up. And visually run that infinity. Okay? And what you're doing when you run that infinity is you're building it. And you do it 18 times. And when you finish... It's become so volumized that you become white light. You absorb it. And when you become white light, you just be in that white light. That is healing. That is divine frequency. It is love. It is perfection. Just let yourself be white light and feel how peaceful that was. Did everybody feel how peaceful that was? Ah, oh, it's beautiful. So I want to thank you. You are wonderful. Thank you.